Let's get in feet. Oh, you're lucky. You would just fit it to a nice mm -hmm. side, huh? Great timing, great timing. 2.30, they get fed at 2.30 every, every afternoon. Early in the morning at 2.30. Now, let me tell you about these birds here, people. This is called American White Ibis. American White Ibis, I-B-I-S. Mm -hmm. This bird are near from Florida, okay? And they're a very smart bird. They're the last bird to leave the area when a storm is approaching. And the very first one to come back as the storm passes. American White Ibis. All these birds, by the way, they were born here, 99% of them. Probably 100% of them. They were all born here on the, um, on the Flamingo Gardens ground. So they, uh, they do fly away sometimes. They don't. They always come back, though. As you see, we got quite a few of them. Now, these are, these are PNs, people. These are females right here, right next to us. These are P PNs, females. Uh, the peacocks are the males. I don't see the peacocks around, but uh, these are females. And... We'll come. There's a peacock over there, yeah. Peacock on the passenger side. Now, peacocks are more, I see more, more females than guys than the <laughs> males, okay? That's the way it always is, right? <laughs> females are always much more females, thank God. Thank God for girls. <laughs> All right, before I go any further, I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you. You see those, you see those two plants? The plant behind the flamingo plant on this one on the right? That will take you to the back where we have more native animals. We got bobcats back there, we got river otters, we have turtles, geese, um, baby alligators, huge alligators also. Our own beautiful Florida black bear, his name is Josh. He's back there next to the river otters. As a matter of fact, this is uh, this is part of his culture right here. Go for a walk, people, go for a walk. Beautiful, beautiful day. Take advantage of it. Go back there and check everything that we have to offer, okay? Don't forget to take your water bottle with you if you decide to go for a walk, which I do recommend. Take your water bottle, drink plenty of water, drink plenty of aqua, important to keep hydrated. All right, on the passenger side, that house was built for Mr. Floyd and Mrs. Jane Ray, W-R-A-Y. The Rays came here from Indiana in 1925 on vacation, and they, they f fell in love with the area, even though it was still pretty much underwater. They were able to purchase like 300 acres of this now where he started a very profitable seafood business. I'll tell you all about his business as we approach the other girls up ahead, okay? Moving on. Thank you, Anita. Before we go any further, what are you doing over here? Look at this. This is a beautiful mute swan, Francesca. I don't know what she's doing so far from the pond. Mm -hmm. Francesca, a beautiful mute swan. Oh, that's a swan like that. Now, mute swans are strictly um, water birds. Uh, again, she's got two ponds which you will see up ahead. Mm -hmm. And she obviously, she, when she came for a walk, beautiful day. Now, they're a very really clumsy walker. They, they cannot walk very, very easily at all. Their feet are completely webbed. Hello. So, excellent swimmers, but uh, as far as walking is concerned, they not, they can't walk very, very well. But that's a beautiful, beautiful new swan, Francesca. Flamingo. All right. Oh, look at this one, guys. Moving on, moving on. Now, let me tell you about peacocks. I told you about peahens, right? Peahens are the females. And uh, peacocks are the males. Here, we have one on the side of the, of the, of the yeah. family, here on the driver's side. Uh, excuse me, and another one on the... On the passenger side, let me just think about let's just talk about this one here. Again, peacock has the males on the males are the one with the did you see those feathers in the back? That's called the train, like a wedding dress, okay? And that one is not even grown yet. They uh, they lose those feathers completely in the summer months and they just started to grow it again about about two months ago, those feathers. Uh, and uh, it's gonna be another three months before they, they're fully grown. I think once again, once it's fully grown, those feathers is called a train, like a wedding dress. And I think trains as long as Five feet long, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful uh, trains. The reason for the male, the reason for the peacock to have a beautiful train is to impress their females, to impress their ladies, their peahens during mating season. I'm sure maybe some of you have seen it in magazines or movies. They open up yep. in a beautiful arch. That's what they do to impress their ladies. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful bird. <laughs> People, that big tree right there, I'm pointing out on the driver's yes. side, the tall one. That's an avocado tree. Aguacate in Spanish. Where is the avocado? Now, the avocado is from Mexico. Now, people think that the avocado is a, is a vegetable. 
Because we do here, we salt, and pepper, and onions, and olive oil. And we toss on the sara, which is by the way delicious. But it's actually a fruit. The aguacate is a fruit. That's where we get the guacamole deep from. Oh, look at this one. It's on. This is what I call a mini banana plantation over here, plantano. Oh, wow, it's look, nice. Banana, banana now, trees. Uh, you always hear people say banana trees. Bananas are not trees. <laughs> bananas are plants. Bananas plants. Check out the trunk of these plants, you see? It's not a solid wooden bark. The trunk consists of a series of leaves that come up and form the trunk. Now, they might look a little raggedy to you, but they're actually not. They're very, very healthy. Most of them are going through that process right now, replacing all those all those brown leaves will be falling off very soon and a new bunch of green leaves will spring up to replace those See trunks. Them? Banana oh, plants. Banana plants. A couple more peacocks, beautiful peacocks right here. Oof. So imagine, imagine those feathers, the, the train, five feet long, it's beautiful. That'll be another couple of months before they're fully grown, though, like I said, but uh, once they open up, it's fantastic. Okay, moving on. This, um, this area of people is called Harohamo Tree Island. Okay, <laughs> these are so trees, beautiful. obviously. Oh these God. are called live oak trees. And this mm -hmm. area, uh, this, this, um, again, is Harohamo Tree Island. It's and look one very interesting fact about this, this Mother Nation's creation here, people, we did not plant anything here, okay? All these trees, they've been here for over 500 years. Wow. Um, this area, with the designers of these um, tree islands, the enemies that provide habitat, for a Native American, this is exactly where they lived. This is where they built their cheeky huts. Remember what I said? Oh, this was underwater, so they would re they would build their cheeky huts on the, on top of these little three islands to to stay up to stay above water. We'll talk more about that as we come around, okay? In a little while. Let's keep going here. Coming up to what I call a mini tropical rainforest, although it is a true rainforest. It's a major one compared to the ones I've been to in my lifetime, especially the one in the Dario Jungle in Panama, where I spent some time doing research. Now that specific rainforest is at least 100 times denser than this one. By denser, I mean that the canopy is yeah. completely covered with thousands of trees, to the point where no light gets through it whatsoever. Now, as we all know, there are seven countries on Earth, and every country except Antarctica. Oh, this way. That's a little rainforest, the biggest one, the more, the more funny, in South America. The Amazon jungle. Amazon the Amazon rainforest, <laughs> where records show that it gets anywhere from 15 <laughs> to 20 feet of rain every year. Wow. Look... Countries that make up the Amazon rainforest are Colombia, Venezuela, oh. Peru, we are on the... Ecuador, Shrimp? Guyana, Argentina. Sixty yeah, percent yeah. of global sea levels are in the Which, by the way, are so. very, very important to the ecosystem of Earth. And actually, to you and I, to all of us, forty percent of all oxygen on Earth, forty percent of all oxygen on Earth is provided by the trees in the rainforest. Wow. That's why it's so important this place to keep is them beautiful. healthy, especially for you guys are in the Fort especially area. for our little ones. Especially for our children, our grandchildren, and for generations to come as well. Flamingo Garden, sorry guys. That was Francesca, a mute swan that we saw back there. Check it out, this is Lucy, a beautiful goose. Lucy the goose over here. Let's look for the goose. See the beautiful white bird on the driver's side? Do you guys see the goose? That's our goose, Lucy. Lucy. Come over here, girl. Come here, Lucy. Sometimes she hears me, sometimes she talks about, you know That's the name. Girl, she, knows, right? she knows my, my voice, but uh, I don't think she's... No. Okay. I believe they just got through eating. Like I said, a wildlife crew we just went by a little while ago. And they fed all the birds, and all the animals, and all the birds. Kevin, I hope you're full. People, keep in mind that these birds are... Uh, they're all wild the birds. Yes, they do live among us, but they, uh, they find their food most... 90% of their food is found by pure instinct. Um, yeah, on the ground and such, but they do get fed twice yeah, a day, like I said, we we'll take very good care of them. All right, moving on. Coming up yeah. to our little tree yeah, island, yeah, yeah. keep in mind what I said, all these trees are Mother Nation's creation, oh, people will not plant there. anything here. Oh my God, I saw that. These trees are no dead of a flood, they require no maintenance whatsoever, we don't touch these trees. Oh, that's, that's really a dead, like, no As a matter of fact, the yeah, canopy yeah, was completely no covered, <laughs> which we have lost a lot of trees, as you see. <laughs> Mostly, mostly due to all the hurricanes that we have suffered through the years. 
And like I said, we don't replace anything here. We don't plant anything. We live it just like Mother Nature created it. We don't mess with Mother Nature's creations. This area was habitat for the Native Americans, for tribes like the Tequestas, the Mikusukis, the Seminoles that lived up here. Although this was pretty much strictly Seminole country. The Tequestas and the Mikusukis live south of here in Miami. And I know that for a fact since quite a few years ago when I was a, com uh, a younger man, I was a competitor cyclist. And along with my cycling team, we would often go on training ride to the west coast of Florida on a road called the Tamiami Trail, which goes right through the Everglades. And we would see, uh, we would still see the Mikusuki tribe oh, living in their chicken house story, along the canals of the Everglades. We would wave oh, at them, they would wave the at us. Quite an experience. Oh, Alright people, let me um, before I tell you about this pond, check it out, look at the turtle. Let me move real slow. You see that turtle on top of the rock over the there? I'm pointing it right here. The driver's side, oh. of course. Turtle is that way. You guys see the turtle? See that turtle? No. no. Look at the iguana. Look at this little green iguana right here. It's a baby iguana right here. Oh, iguana. Iguana right here. Oof. Look at I'm afraid of iguana. It's a water that made it go green iguana from Mexico. Mm -hmm. I got the iguana in the tree. Now let me let me tell you about these two different let me tell you about these two different reptiles, people. First of all, uh, the, the turtle and the by the rock. Turtles are co brother reptiles. Okay, they need the sun to survive, literally. They need the sun to keep the temperature of their bodies up. That's what they'll do most of the day. They will come out of the water and they'll sun themselves. You guys see the turtle? As a matter of fact, before I tell you about the iguanas now, check it out. The Look at it. Look at the tree oh, trunk over here. I see it. Look over here. Two more turtles. Look at the turtle. Yeah, it's under wrap. Look, it's under wrap. That's a big one right there. There's a big one. Again, turtles don't belong here. Uh, not only in, in, in the native of Florida, of course, but uh, they also, you can also find them all over the, all over the southern oh, wow. United States, uh, the Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana, even Georgia. As opposed to iguanas, iguanas, uh, I hate to use the word invasive, but that's exactly what they are. They're invasive reptiles that don't belong here in Florida. They don't even belong in North America, for that matter. They're mostly from Mexico, like that one we just saw a while ago. Bye -bye, Central or South America also. Yes. But they are also cobra reptiles that need the sun to, uh, to, su to survive, literally. Keep in mind, people, that this area here, this is the very eastern side of the Everglades. This is where the Everglades uh, starts, right here. Um, because the further west you go, the, the further west you go from here, the more inland uh, you, you go, more into the Everglades. Let me tell you about this birds here. I don't think I told you about these birds, right? Did I? No. These are not ducks. You see these two beautiful birds? They're not ducks, people. These are called, these are Egyptian geese. Egyptian geese. Can you see them? You see that pattern on the eyes? Can you see that? Let me move up. You see that? Yeah. Well, ladies, what is that? Mascara, eyeliner, eyeshadow, whatever it's called. <laughs> but that's actually how they got their name. They got their name hundreds and hundreds of years ago because they said they resemble Cleopatra. Egyptian geese. I will have walk away if you feel like taking a stroll later on if you have time. I invite you to come up to a well of walkway here, go up the boardwalk into a little rainforest and learn more about native plants, native birds. Beautiful day. Beautiful, beautiful day. Do take us go for a walk. Always good to go to go for a walk. Don't forget your water bottle though. If you decide to go for a walk, make sure you keep hydrated. Good afternoon. Beautiful day for a walk, just like we're a beautiful couple. <laughs> All right, moving on. People, these trees are called Everglades fan fern trees. That's the name of them. And you see the leaf that they resemble a fan. You see that? Now, there's thousands of these uh, trees in the Everglades that provide shelter, refuge to many critters. Um, I, I have personally seen many uh, foxes. I've seen uh, um, squirrels, of course. I've seen um, turtles, raccoons that take shelter under these trees to stay safe, mostly from alligators and bobcats. I used to go hunting a lot back in the day in the Everglades. I would set up a campground under these old trees. 
The shelters mostly from the sun. Sometimes the rain and bugs. Although I remember seeing a few bunkers once in a while, but on the uh, campsite, but they never got too close to, to pose any danger, thank God. All right, back to Mr. Floyd Ray's business. Like I said, he was a pioneer. He was the very first version of oranges. This was once the one and only orange groves in the whole state of Florida back in the 1930s. A very profitable, very successful, successful business that he had. Unfortunately, all those trees were destroyed by all the hurricanes that we have suffered through the years. So we replaced them with mangoes. It's our, our mango grove. Now, as you see, there's no fruits with these trees, people. These, uh, these trees are completely bare. The flower, first of all, the, 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 before it becomes a fruit, a fruit, it is a flower, okay? And the mango flower will only bloom like um, after the winter, later in the late, late February, early, early March, early spring. We'll show, we should be able to see quite a few um, flowers on these trees that will become the mango. In the meantime, on the on the passenger side, people, that brand new cactus garden, we just finished this couple of, about three months ago, actually. Beautiful cactuses. I see a bunch of um, euphorias right here. I see uh, some candelabras. Um, those, the little, those little ones sticking out of the ground, those are called man, uh, old man, old man of the, what is it called? Old man of the, um, I forgot, old man or something. Oh, old man of the mountain. This one in the front is called a Madagascar palm. Now this is something that I'm really, this is what I'm really looking forward to right here. As you see, it is under construction, a brand new, beautiful butterfly gallery. I call it butterfly gallery slash pavilion. It says pavilion there. Okay. Now again, like you see, as you see, it is still on the on the ground, on the on the construction, and it is in the shape of a giant caterpillar. That's what it's supposed to be. Giant caterpillar. We're going to be uh, presenting many many different species of butterflies here, people. As you see, it is a walking uh, uh, um, uh, facility where we're going to be presenting different, many, many different species of bar uh, butterflies. We're going to be conducting many different lectures of um, educational lectures, if you will, educational um, field trips, not just for children, but for adults as well. I, I forgot to mention, people, that the, the, the um, the Egyptian geese will always be together. Male and female will always be together as a couple. There they go. Always together. There they go. Male and female, always together as a couple. Back to the butterflies. On the passenger side, that's the I-60 butterfly so garden. Now let me tell you what goes on here. We have a couple of ladies that are experts on butterflies that they go around and every day and they gather as many caterpillars as they can find and they will bring you to this garden. Now, those caterpillars within two weeks or so will metaphor into butterflies. That is the process of the metamorphosis of the butterfly from the egg to the larva, from the larva to the caterpillar, and from the caterpillar to the butterfly. The, um, the not that many inside the garden, they do, um, they do get released every couple of weeks or so. Every time they're, uh, hey, that, that uh, little uh, garden is half full, they do get, they get released, and the whole process will begin again. Beautiful, beautiful butterflies. I like butterflies. I have a little saying that I made up. I think butterflies are like self-propelled flowers. Beautiful, beautiful insect. Okay, people, cycad garden. Cycads are often confused for ferns. As you see, these plants do resemble ferns. They're actually a living fossil. They've been around for millions of years. They were once a main source of food, main source of nutrition for the vegetarian dinosaur over 300 million years ago. Keep in mind, people, Flamingo Garden is not a zoo. <laughs> Flamingo Garden is a botanical garden, and we're most on every place wildlife sanctuary where we rescue and rehabilitate animals as well as birds. Those animals, like our beautiful Florida Panther buddy and our beautiful Black Bear Judge, cannot be released back into the wild since a human imprinted they must remain here. We take very, very good care of them, so they don't mind living here among us. Okay, people, on the driver's side, Mount Flamingo. This area was one of the main areas of habitat for Seminoles. Strictly Seminoles lived up here. This is where they built the shiki house, among all those trees that you see right here. 
Now the seminoles, I'll tell you what that is. That thing hanging, those things hanging, I'll tell you about that, hold on. Now the seminoles, they needed canoes, okay? They needed, remember what I said, all this was on the water. So they needed canoes to travel from one tree island to the other, which they did quite often, mostly for hunting purposes. As a matter of fact, we did find, uh, we found a half a canoe and some artifacts belonging to the seminoles up here. Now back to these things that you see growing, hanging from the trees, those, uh, that's an air plant called Spanish moss. Spanish moss is a very light in weight, very soft in texture, air plant, as you see, that is barely moving in the little breeze that we have to see that, if any movement at all. Now the, the, the seminoles, they used it for bedding purposes, that's how soft it is. They used it for bedding purposes, well, uh, I guess pillows and such, right? Spanish moss. On the passenger side, people with those two candles looking trees, the nut cactus is, that's actually the agave, agave plant from Mexico. Agave. Tequila. What do we get from the agave, guys? Tequila. That's right, young lady, tequila is correct. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> Thank you, John. Tequila, tequila. It's actually the heart, the heart of the agave plant with the tequila. So it's getting fermented. We have a series of young ladies in front. Let's see, one, two, three females and two peacocks. Three peahens and sell, two peacocks. Can you guys tell me this guy is a female? Little birds female? are not mating yet, people. They... Hi, little boy. I know the difference. The mating season starts in March, so, so it's like it, the, 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 uh, they won't red start mating until the, the, the train is completely up. Uh, Completely grown. So is this a female? Which again, it's going to take well, at least two, uh, two months. Alright guys, she's just going to eat What's this? What's this for you? The green one is female. The green one is female. Why is green female? The red house, first of all, the red house was built for Mr. Ray's business, okay? That did not live here. He will come, this is where he will come to conduct his uh, business transactions. And as a weekend retreat also. Now it is a museum. It is now a museum, and I urge you to go in, take a little tour of it, and check out, and, and either you can take a little tour here by yourself, or there's a tour guide in there that will tell you all about the lives of Mr. Floyd and Mrs. Jane Ray, and the history of Flamingo Gardens, which is very, very interesting. I do recommend you going in there. You can spend as much time or as little time as you want. You will enjoy it, trust me. Make sure you uh, take your water bottle wherever you go, people. We're almost finished here. You haven't had any lunch? Here's a cafeteria right here. Grab hot dogs, papitas fritas, un hamburger para los niños. Don't forget your water bottle. <laughs> At three and a half, three thirty, people. You got uh, you got more. Oh. A little half an hour.